So it's worth pausing to examine some of the weapons that were used by both Normans and Irish at this time. So I visited the National History Museum in Dublin to see what exhibits they had on display. This video deals with ranged weapons. These are weapons that can engage targets beyond the hand-to-hand -hand distance. Used by both Irish and Norman, the spear was an economical weapon as it required only a small amount of metal for its sharpened tip. Quick to manufacture and needing less smithing than a sword, it remained the main weapon of the common soldier and was also used from horseback. Broadly speaking, spears were either designed to be used in melee or to be thrown. Within this simple classification, there was a remarkable range of spearhead types. For example, one historian identified 30 different spearhead categories in early Saxon England. Most spearheads were generally leaf-shaped, but the winged or lugged spear, popular with the Vikings, had two prominent wings at the base of the spearhead, either to prevent the spear penetrating too far into an enemy or to aid in spear fencing. So spear fencing was a little bit like sword fencing. Imagine this twine is the line of attack from an enemy with a spear or a sword, and as they come at me, I dip my point under their line of attack and I do what's called a circular parry and I deflect their point away from me. Now I can counter-attack or riposte. The thrusting spear also had the advantage of reach, being considerably longer than a sword for example. Exact spear lengths are hard to deduce as few spearhead shafts survive archaeologically, but six to eight feet would seem to be the norm. Gerald also tells us of the Irish that, quote, they were armed with short spears and two darts. Darts can be distinguished from javelins by the presence of fletching to give them more stable flight. Little known is about their effectiveness, but they were common across Europe in the Middle Ages for both war and hunting. The lack of archaeological finds for war darts have led some historians to speculate that perhaps crossbow bolts, spearheads or arrowheads have been wrongly classified when they could in fact be war darts. The Norman army relied heavily on crossbows and bows. This deer antler nut was used to release the bowstring of a crossbow. Crossbows shoot arrow-like projectiles called bolts or quarrels. These examples below were designed to be armour-piercing. The crossbow was simple enough to be operated by relatively untrained soldiers, thus enabling a military body to feel the potent force of crossbowmen with little expense beyond the cost of the weapons themselves. However, the crossbow took longer to load and may have been more useful for the defence from walls of towns or castles. The Welsh bow was documented by Gerald of Wales, who writes of the bows used by the Welsh men of Gwent. Quote, they were made neither of horn, ash or yew, but of elm. Gerald continues, quote, In the war against the Welsh, one of the men-at-arms was struck by an arrow shot at him by a Welshman. It went right through his thigh, high up, where it was protected inside and outside the leg by his iron shoulders, and then through the skirt of his leather tunic. Next it penetrated that part of the saddle which is called the alva or seat, and finally lodged in his horse, driving so deep that it killed the animal. This bow in Dublin is of Viking origin before the Norman invasion and is quite long. The Welsh bow is believed to have been somewhat smaller. It is said that the Irish had not embraced the bow as a military weapon at this time. Nevertheless, when confronted by Norman archers, the Irish were, in the words of Gerald, quote, paralysed and panic-stricken by the sudden wounds inflicted by our arrows. It may be what terrorised the Irish from not the bows themselves, but the effectiveness with which they were used by the Normans. While the Vikings had used bows in Ireland, there is nothing to suggest that they ever deployed a dedicated corps of archers as the Normans did, and thus the Irish had probably never experienced anything like the firepower of the Norman archers. So the final ranged weapon used by the Irish is the sling, used to hurl stones. A sling has a small cradle or pouch in the middle of two retention cords. A projectile is placed in the pouch, the sling is swung in an arc, and at one end the sling is released to launch the projectile. By its double pendulum kinetics, the sling enables stones to be thrown much further than they could be by hand alone. Now to explain double pendulum kinetics is a little bit above my pay grade, but Gerald of Wales tells us more. When other weapons fail, they hurl stones against the enemy in battle with such quickness and dexterity that they do more execution than the slingers of any other nation. Besides, in any fighting in Ireland, 
we must be particularly careful to ensure that archers are always incorporated in the mounted formations so that the damage caused by the stones with which they actually attack heavily armed troops at close range may be averted by volleys of arrows from our side. So far no archaeological evidence of slings has been found in Ireland as far as I know mainly due to the materials that slings were made of but the ammunition they used is everywhere. So because I've run out of time there are two weapons I didn't cover in this video which I hope to do in the near future and they are the sword and the Irish favourite the battle axe. Until then, thanks for watching.